Welcome, everybody, to 13 Minutes of News. In 13 minutes or less. Um, trying out a new camera here today, guys. As you've probably seen in other past videos, this is a sign that my son got for me, Rideshare Rodeo. Um, it does different colors and stuff, but it's daytime light, so um, not really able to show it off as much as I'd like to, but uh, going to try this format today. Um, as always, you know, why even, why even screw around? Let's just jump in because a few of these things I've talked about on different things throughout the week, but, um, they're big things this week. I mean, each article is its own big deal. So I will, I'll put the links in, in for these articles too, into the show notes. Um, obviously I do the time coding, um, for the chapters, uh, but I'll put them at the bottom relevant to each story because i mean they're really you guys should be looking into this stuff for real um we've talked about connecticut uh and their 36 dollar an hour gig worker bill that's going to pay a dollar 30 a mile um guaranteed you're going to have union fees you're going to have road fees um it basically it it's like the extreme hybrid version of w2 employee with the gig economy so it's like the farthest any state or or let or, or you know any any voting or bills or anything going on they're all different across the country nothing has been this over the top i mean we were doing the math the other day so like if you do ride share and you get 36 an hour and you drive somebody 70 miles during that hour because it's for active time clearly um you will get for the hour 36 dollars guaranteed um and then you're paid a dollar 30 a mile so if you took somebody 70 miles or 75 miles during that hour you're gonna be paid a dollar 30 a mile the mileage alone that's close to a hundred dollars plus the 36 and so that's 136 dollars an hour um now for delivery same thing dollar 30 a mile and 36 dollars um and an active hour you guys this is not i mean i know everybody's probably thinking same thing <laughs> let's move to connecticut but it's not sustainable it's not going to work on any level we talked about this in depth this week um so yeah um pay attention to that stuff you guys uh um big stuff big big things happening here so um speaking of that let's move right into michigan michigan is doing something it steps outside of the traditional gig economy just a little bit but Michigan is doing something um, that no state has done in decades. In fact, in the past 58 years, there's only been one state that did this. And in 2012, they turned they overturned it back to what it was. So they went back to what it, sh it originally was. Um, if you're not familiar, um, I am talking about Miss Michigan being the first state in decades to repeal the right to work law. If you guys are not familiar with the right to work law, there are other intricacies that you need to be aware of if if you have right to work law in your state. Um, personally, I think it's a it's an extra protection. So I don't for me, it's a little different unless everything were to change and everybody's becomes W2 and, and union model. But I don't need right to work here unless that were to happen because I don't apply with companies that have unions. Um, by the way, um, for those of you curious, because we've talked about this a lot, so let me just put this in perspective. Since the very beginning of unions, the very first year, last year was the lowest number of union members ever in history at 10.1%. So 10.1% of... Um, of employees are in a union now normally that's been anywhere up to like 22 percent or even 25 percent maybe if you go back far enough into some wars or something but regardless um you know let's call it 22 because that i know i saw it yesterday i mean 22 percent on a decline to 10 percent they gotta do everything they can right well so what does this mean what is right what does the repeal of the right to work law mean so um, this isn't a party statement, uh, but I'm not a big fan of, of Gretchen Whitmore. I'm from Michigan originally, 
So I, I feel I have a right to speak on this because um, a lot of states got stuck during the pandemic, I feel like, with some candidates that maybe wouldn't have taken the place. And I'm not saying it needed to be Republican, need to be Democrat, need to be liberal or farthest left, farthest right. I'm not saying any of that, but I'm just saying I think there were better candidates in the runnings of a lot of races during the pandemic that probably could have taken Gretchen's office. However, a lot of states were, I mean, people were even voting with the, let's not, let's not shift the tides too much with people during something we already an unknown. So you just kind of keep the lesser of, or, you know, you keep the evil that you have, the evil that you know. Um, so, but she did, what she's done is repeal the right to work law. So, um, what does that mean? It means that if you work, if, if you work in Michigan prior to this, this was done last Friday. If you work in Michigan, anytime prior to this, you are, if you have a, a job that ha has a union with the right to work law, you are allowed to pay the union dues and participate in the benefits that the union offers. Or you are allowed to simply opt out and say, I don't want to pay union dues and I don't need um, what they're offering me. I would rather just have my money, please. Um, there are 26 right to work states still. And um, so, you know, basically about half of the country has a right to work state clause. But we just watched one go down. And I got to tell you guys, I've talked to a lot of people who said that can't happen. That won't happen. You know, like say what you want about the pro act, say what you want about AB5 and, you know, Massachusetts and Connecticut, but no state will overturn a right to work law. I've heard that from everybody. Nobody said to me, maybe you're right about that. Maybe that could happen because everybody was thinking unless it's done in the pro act in one big uh, move, it's not going to happen. Well, it just did. <laughs> and it just did in a state where I know a ton of people um in the workforce and this is not what they want um this is kind of like that ab5 legislation you know and uh to that you know i say um you know like don't don't make i know that we elect people to make laws and put things into place but same thing that gavin newsom did in california don't have a don't have a weekend meeting with Gavin Newsom, Lorena Gonzalez, and two other people in a room and come out with a decision that affects the entire state and puts over 2 million, over 2.5 million people with 40 plus year careers, 20 plus year careers, whatever, way before the or the uh, app-based gig economy, out of business for good and doesn't allow them to work. So that's kind of what was done. And then the same thing with the right to work law. It's... It, she has enough push to just make it happen. So I feel like, you know, there's degrees of things. Like if, if a road needs to be fixed and, 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 and the governor needs to say, hey, let's allocate the funds to get that road fixed, that's day-to-day -day operations. But this is a big change to lifestyles, to earning potentials, to um, freedom, um, you know, to be honest, I, I gotta say this. You know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there, you guys. I I think that every state should have right to work law. And and there's a second part to that, because I'm not saying let's get rid of unions, but make sure there's a right to work law in place that allows them to opt out of that union. Because we can't we we can't just force people to be in these unions because then they look at salaries. And they don't understand, well, you know, all the taxes they're doing in their head. Okay, well, I've made that salary before. That should come out to about great. Okay. But now you have to figure in the union dues. And for each one, it's different. I mean, it could be a lot of money that you're paying in union dues. So bottom line, the right to work law, in my opinion, should be in every state. You should be able to opt out of a union and not use the representation of the union. I also believe majorly that i'm fine with unions being around but here's where my here's where my issue is let unions compete don't be don't have one union and tell everybody you have to be part of this union for this job let there be two or three choices of unions 
and what they really offer, because I think then you don't have the monopoly problem and they're not doing anything. Then you might have some unions that I still don't believe I would want to partake in it because I don't want, I wouldn't want union money taken out only because in the big picture, I'll roll the dice because I, I believe that I'd rather have my money because I don't, I know how to negotiate for myself. If, if that led to it didn't work out, I would probably just leave a job. Anyway. If, a, if a job was telling me you have to strike, you, abs, you have to strike, you can't go to work. Well, I, you know, I, I'd leave that job anyway. So why would I pay into a system that makes me do that? Um, but this is a big deal, you guys. So I'm going to quickly name off, I just noticed how long that went. I'm going to quickly name off some other articles that I want you guys to look at. Um, San Francisco's self-driving cars have a hit and run problem. Usually they're the victims. That's an article that I'll put in there. The Uber clawbacks on double pay from drivers across the country uh, that was done on April around April Fool's, March 31st till April 2nd. This was happening across the country, and it's in different ways. The article is very descriptive on some different scenarios and how they all look. So take a look at that. Um, and then God must have put you in my car. Uber driver donates kidney to passenger. Kim talked about this on Thursday Roundtable, and we talked about it last night on Driver Nation. This was the kindest, most selfless, um, humanitarian thing that any gig worker has ever done that I know of. Um, it's a it's a touching story. Um, please check it out. Uh, and the Seattle DoorDash uh, uh, victim who got taken by a sophisticated hack, where they can where they're telling you where you are, what your order is, what order you're on. They they know a bunch of numbers. You guys all have to look at this because this hack is going on there on the East Coast as well. This hack's be, becoming more um, a, more of a problem. And then um, the Wendy's debacle, you guys. I mean, geez, we all we all avoid Wendy's like the plague. If you do, if you do delivery, right? You, I mean, most likely, I know there's some people, but most people avoid Wendy's like the plague. And then they run a deal, and it's like, hey man, we're gonna give you one last shot, and they just bombed. So that story will be in there as well. Um, you guys, I, I know it was pretty much the one story in a little Connecticut, but that's 13 minutes of news in just under 13 minutes. Peace.